Hey everybody, my name is Jen and this is Jen Geigley Knits. And today I'm going to talk about how you can turn a beautiful sock tube like this into a pair or sometimes more than one pair of socks. And so this video will take you through each and every single step of knitting socks from a tube, from cranking the tube on a machine to cutting in the heel, including the knitting instructions for each part of the cuff, the toe, and the heel with a stretchy bind off, kitchenering the toe and heel, and then everything in between. So this is gonna cover all of it. Um, I decided to make this video because I had been looking for a video like this when I had started doing this. And so I'm just gonna cover it all right here in one place in case it helps someone else. So when you make a sock tube and they can be all different lengths depending on how much yarn you have or if you want to use a contrast color for the cuff and toe this is all really easy to do and i'm going to show you how to measure and split your tubes for your foot size um, i personally knit my sock tubes on a dean and bean knitting machine and you can knit the entire sock on the machine and i do that as well but sometimes i like to hand knit my cuff toe and heel because i like um, I don't have a ribber, so I can do ribbing by hand, and this really doesn't take very long to throw in a heel and a toe and a nice little cuff. So I do like to do this sometimes, and then I like to do the whole sock on my machine sometimes. Since there are a lot of steps in this process, I have gone ahead and made timestamps for this video for each step and each section of the video. So if you wanna skip ahead, that's great. If you just wanna skip to the section you need, totally do that. The times are in the notes below and you can click on those or you can click in the little bar that YouTube puts down here and you can see each segment as they come. And then you can just skip the other stuff. But if you want to see every single step that I use to take a sock tube to a finished sock, it's all there just in case anybody wants to see the entire process before you get into it. So yeah, I've included everything. So let's just get started. Let's get into it. Let's go. So the first thing I need is a long continuous tube and I collect Knit Picks Felici sock yarn. I love this yarn. It stripes up really, really nicely and it's really fun to crank it and watch the stripes appear. So I'm gonna use two skeins of this cause I know that will make two socks plus some left over. And so when I almost run out of one, I'm gonna add the next one in and I'm gonna try my best to match the stripes up so it becomes one long tube that I can use to make two matching socks. I've wound my yarn onto a cone and now we're ready to go. I'm casting on with a 60 stitch cylinder and then using my cast on bonnet to get started. And that's that blue thing I'm attaching right there. Then I'm using some waist yarn and I'm gonna crank a few rounds of this to get started. Next, I'm using this little green strand of Ravel cord, and that will help me separate my working yarn from the waste yarn. Now I'm adding my working yarn. For this sock tube, I'm going to crank at least 140 rounds. I'm ready to take the sock tube off the machine and there it is, all ready to go. Next, you're going to measure to determine the length of the tube for cutting it into two socks. Start by measuring the length of your foot. My foot is nine and a half inches long and my shoe size is eight and a half. I want the leg of my sock to be six inches. So I'm going to add nine and a half inches for my foot plus six inches for my leg. And then I'm going to subtract five and a half inches for the toe and heel. That leaves me with a measurement of 10 inches. So that's how long I want my individual tubes to be. At the 10 inch mark, which conveniently lines up with the stripes on my sock, 
I'm going to use my US size zero DPNs to pick up the right leg of every stitch in that row all the way around the sock tube. You can also use a long circular needle for magic loop. To make sure you pick up every stitch, you can count to make sure you've picked up the same number of stitches that you've cast it on. Next, turn the sock tube over and pick up the right leg of each stitch on this side, being sure to stay in the same row. Take care to catch the right leg of the very first and the very last stitch in this row on both sides because they're a little bit harder to see. Next, go one row above the row you just picked up and do the exact same thing. Use another DPN or needle to pick up the right leg of each stitch in that row all the way around. Double check one more time to make sure you've picked up every stitch. Now it's time to snip. Next, pick up one single stitch in the very center of the row that you did not pick up and snip with scissors. Unpick the loose strand left over all the way around. This will give you two sock tubes. Next, I'm going to remove my ravel cord to separate the sock tube from the cast on bonnet and waist yarn. This green strand almost feels like dental floss and it will just slide out of the stitches really easily. This tube is ready to go. Next, I'm gonna pick up stitches on the second sock tube to make sure that they're both 10 inches long. The yarn I'm unraveling now can be used for a heel or toe later. Now I have two 10 inch sock tubes. 
Next, I'm gonna add a third DPN to the one end of the sock and I'm going to knit the cuff. You want to start with the cuff and then knit the toe and after those two things are done, then you can cut in for the heel. I like to knit one round plain first and then I'm just working a regular two by two rib cuff. I usually work about 14 to 18 rounds for my cuffs, but your cuff length is up to you. Next, we're gonna work Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. This bind off is perfect for ribbing and perfect for socks. It's a stretchy bind off that will hold your socks up, but it won't be too tight on your leg. Starting with a knit stitch, you will do a backwards yarn over, then knit one more stitch. Then you're going to pass the first two stitches over the third stitch. The backwards yarn over just means you're wrapping over the back of your needle from back to front. So here we're passing over the yarn over off and the first stitch off, which leaves you with a knit stitch, backwards yarn over, knitting one more stitch, and then lifting these two stitches over the last stitch you made. And repeat all the way around. You can do this bind off differently to match the rib of the purl stitches, but I find this way looks just as nice and it's a bit easier. The next step is knitting the toe. Start off by knitting four rounds plain, and then we will start our decreases. To decrease, you will knit one, slip, slip, knit, and then knit to the last three stitches on your first needle. When you get to the last three stitches, knit two together, then knit one. Repeat for the other side of the sock. Repeat these steps until you have 20 stitches left on the front of your sock and 20 stitches on the back of your sock. Then repeat the decrease round every round until there are 12 stitches on each side of your sock. Once you have 12 stitches on each side, you're ready to kitchener the toe. Let's start with our setup stitches. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to purl and pull the yarn through. Leave the stitch on the front needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the back needle as if to knit, pull the yarn through, leaving the stitch on the back needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to knit, pull the yarn through, removing the stitch from the front needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to purl, pull the yarn through, leaving the stitch on the front needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the back needle as if to purl, pull the yarn through, removing the stitch on the back needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the back needle as if to knit, pull the yarn through, leaving the stitch on the back needle. Repeat all the way across until all the toe stitches have been worked.
knitwise and off, purlwise and on, purlwise and off, knitwise and on. For the last two stitches, insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to knit and pull the yarn through, removing the stitch from the front needle. Then insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the back needle as if to purl, pull the yarn through, removing the stitch off the back needle, and you're done. Such a nice seamless join. Let's take a moment to admire our progress. It's definitely looking like a sock now. Next, it's time to cut in the heel. You are going to subtract two inches from your foot length and measure up from your toe. Mine is nine and a half inches minus two inches equals seven and a half inches. You also want to make sure that your heel is starting at the same stitch column as your toe. So double check that now. Use a long circular needle or a DPN to pick up the right leg of each stitch on one side of the sock tube for the heel, not all the way around like before. Count to make sure that you have half of your stitches on the needle. For me, this is 30 stitches. Now we're going to do the exact same thing with another needle, one row above the row we just picked up, leaving one row in between. Reach in with a tapestry needle and pull up the middle stitch in the center of the row that you didn't pick up. Snip that stitch and then unpick all the way to the last two stitches on each side to avoid any holes in the corners of the heels. Don't forget to stop before the last two stitches on both sides. Leave the tails on each end to weave in later after you've completed knitting your heel. Divide your stitches onto three needles and then you're ready to start knitting your heel. Tuck your ends inside and save them for later. Bye. 
join your heel yarn and then knit four rounds plain and then you'll decrease exactly like the toe. To decrease, you will knit one, slip slip knit, knit to the last three stitches on the front of your sock, then knit two together and knit one. Then you'll repeat this on the back. Then knit one round plain. Repeat these steps until you have 20 stitches for the front of your sock and 20 stitches for the back of your sock. Then repeat the decrease round every round with no plain rounds until there are 12 stitches on each needle. Then we will Kitchener the heel closed. We are so, so close now. We are almost done. Let's do our setup stitches for the Kitchener stitch. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to purl, pull the yarn through, and leave the stitch on the front needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the back needle as if to knit, Pull the yarn through, leaving the stitch on the back needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to knit. Pull the yarn through, removing the stitch from the front needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to purl. Pull the yarn through, leaving the stitch on the front needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the back needle as if to purl. Pull the yarn through, removing the stitch on the back needle. Insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the back needle as if to knit. Pull the yarn through, leaving the stitch on the back needle. Repeat these steps all the way across until all the heel stitches have been worked. For the last two stitches, insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the front needle as if to knit, pull the yarn through, removing the stitch from the front needle. Then insert the tapestry needle through the first stitch on the back needle as if to purl, pull the yarn through, removing the stitch on the back needle, and you're done. That's it, we did it. Way to go, we just made a sock from a sock tube. I have included some additional resources in the show notes below, um, some things that helped me when I was learning how to do this. So Magpie's Cottage has, I believe, a PDF of kind of a pattern outline to kind of guide you through this process. And I think they have YouTube videos as well. And then um, the Dean and Bean Sock Machine YouTube channel has videos of all sorts in case you're interested in a sock knitting machine. The Dean and Bean is a very good way to start the sock knitting adventure. It's much more reasonable. Sock knitting machines are expensive. They just all are. It's a very complicated piece of equipment, but um, <clears throat> the Dean and Bean is definitely the most affordable way to get started to see if you like it. And you should watch their videos first to see if it is for you or not for you. 
Also, a lot of places offer tube knitting services now, like even local yarn shops I've seen online um, sometimes offer this service. Um, or there's people like me that might have a machine that might be able to knit a tube for you. I'm not totally offering that service personally right now, but <laughs> I might someday. I mean, it's, it's very fun. Um, the other resource is Lift Bridge Yarns, and I believe they have a sock tube sizing chart that has kind of a breakdown of the inches for your foot size, like your shoe size. And then I believe they also have a knitting a sock tube worksheet that helps you figure out the math. So those are some of the resources I listed below. There's links in the notes below and just go check that out in case you wanna find out more. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will try my best to help answer them. Um, again, in the notes, the show notes, there will be additional resources that might be helpful to you. And I have other Dean and Bean sock knitting machine videos in different playlists if you want to go look around at those. But I hope this helped you knit up some socks. It's really fun to kind of bust through your stash a little bit faster and just have a little bit of hand knitting involved too to kind of make it a hybrid situation. But yeah, I really enjoy this way of making socks and I hope you do too. So thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Bye.